hello and welcome to a brief guided meditation to help you release anxiety and stress. Anxiety and stress are a normal part of the human experience. You're taking in stimuli and information from all directions through all of your energetic channels all day, every day. And because we live in a world of free will where many souls are present who have a multiplicity of soul paths and purposes and contracts that they've agreed to, there really is no true predictability in the universe. And so that's what leads to the beauty and the serendipity and the excitement of human existence, but it's also what leads to the stress and to the anxiety. And one thing before I begin our work today that I want to remind you is that your mind is not always the most trustworthy source of information. Your heart chakra is the center of your energetic system. It's the fourth chakra in a seven chakra system. Those are your corporeal chakras that are attached or connected to your physical body. Of course, there are other chakras, but there are seven main chakras that extend from your crown to your root. And the heart is the center of that. And there's a reason it's the center. Your emotions are your most accurate source of guidance, wisdom, and information. We're trained in Western society to trust our mind over our heart, trust reason over emotion. And that's very much a product, I would say, of at first the, the European Renaissance and the focus on education and the cultivation of ideas, which of course propelled us in terms of our advancements and our innovations. So there's nothing wrong with developing the intellect and, and prioritizing the intellect. But I think we do that sometimes at the expense of really trusting what we feel. And so I want to encourage you starting today to check yourself a little bit. You know, when you when your monkey mind is chattering, especially if it's late at night. <laughs> and I mean, if, if you don't struggle with racing thoughts sometimes in the middle of the night, we can't be friends <laughs> because it's a very common experience when you wake up and, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and your thoughts are going and it's leading to anxiety, it's usually, you know, like you should have done this. You could have done that. Why did that happen? What's going on over here? And so I want to teach you today to push pause. It's not that you're going to ignore your mind, but I do want you to put your mind in some broader perspective. I want you to recognize how influenced you are by external stimuli all the time. If you watch too much television, you may want to curb it when you're going through periods of intense anxiety and stress. Because whether you realize it or not, there's a certain amount of external programming that happens through media, whether it's social media or any other form of media. And it's it can be really challenging for the human psyche. We were not trained to live the way we live today sitting at a desk in a lot of cases for eight hours and then going home and sitting in front of a television sometimes for another two hours. That's not really what we were prepared to do as a species. And so I think it's important to move. I think it's important to ground. I think it's important to really regulate what you expose your nervous system to. And you have some control over that. You don't have control over all of it and you don't need to have control over all of it, but you do have some control over some of it. And so starting today, I really want you to think about, I almost want you to look at yourself as a parent would look at you and say, okay, you need more rest. You need to watch a little less television, especially television that, that's sort of like rough on your psyche, you know, and you need to bring yourself into a gentler space. I long sometimes for what my soul recognizes as the past, meaning living by candlelight and eating whole foods that we grow ourselves and spending hours each evening in conversation with each other because we didn't have any other form of entertainment or distraction. And I think that was a more peaceful life. It wasn't easier. I'm not saying at all that the past was easier than it is now. We probably have more ease, but I'm going to argue we have less peace. Can I get an amen? So how do we go from <clears throat> celebrating and working with and aligning to ease, which is the gift of modern technology and civilization, and yet still remain able to access that level of peace and connection that our ancestors understood 
When you feel peaceful, you digest your food in a different way. You receive more of the nutrients from your food. If you eat too quickly and you eat when you're stressed, is that really a source of nourishment for your body? And then we wonder why we're not digesting things well. We end up with diverticulitis and on and on and on, right? So today's meditation is called the blessing box. And what I'm effectively doing with you right now is opening a portal. I'm going to call in the guides and the guardians of the seven sacred directions to be with us, to open their gateways. If I was with you right now, I would sit you down and I would give you a hug. <laughs> and I would rub your shoulders. I would tell you to roll those shoulders back and turn your head from side to side. Feel your hips drop and soften into the chair that you're sitting in or the floor that you're sitting on. Wherever you are is perfect. We've become a society that says, I'll feel better when. I'll be happier when. I'll experience peace when. And we postpone joy. But joy is right here. Joy is like, wait a minute, I'm over here. Hi, do you see me? So I'm going to invite you right now just to recognize that you are perfect as you are. Wherever you are is a great place to do this meditation. You don't need anything else. Don't go grabbing candles and stuff. I want you to learn how to, to be the magic without feeling like you have to change anything, do anything, gather anything, fix anything. It's all good right now. So rolling those shoulders back calling your energy into this moment if you've sent your energy anywhere else out to other people out to different places out to just gently call it back in if you're holding on to energies that don't belong to you let's send those back to their source with love and so spirit guides we ask that you return any energies that have been sent to us by others we ask that you return those energies now to their source with the same frequency and intention with which they were sent. Everything goes back to its home now. You're not holding anybody else's stuff. You're not carrying anybody else right now. You don't need to do that. That's actually not how you heal people. It's not how you help people. It's not how you support people. And you're not a host. You're a conduit. It isn't coming from you. It's moving through you. You know, people sometimes ask me, why do you believe in God or how do you believe in God? And I have a lot of different answers to that question. But one thing I will tell you, because I do believe in God, I do believe in a one source, um, <clears throat> is I take a lot of comfort. I find a lot of comfort in my faith because if I really believed that I was doing the healing, that would be a lot of pressure for me to hold. The reality is I absolutely know it's not me. It can't be me. I don't, I don't have that capacity. I'm not the one source. But when I put my mind to it, I can be a really good, open, and clear channel for it. It can flow through me. But it's not, it's not from me. Cut yourself some slack today, right? You can put your hand over your heart and just... Feel your heartbeat for a moment. When you, when you feel really extreme anxiety, the two quickest fixes are to breathe audibly so you can hear your breath really deeply in and out. And to put your hand over your heart or on your pulse and connect back to your life force. Say your full name, your birth name out loud three times. Does it too? Because your name is a charm. Your name is magic. And so hearing your name, seeing your name in your mind. It's this little message to your central nervous system that says, come back, come back, come back. And so the portal I'm opening is this box, the blessing box today. And I want you to imagine that off to your right, maybe, you know, seated on a beautiful table or an altar is the most 
beautiful carved wooden box you've ever seen. Might be a foot wide. Maybe it's a foot square. It's two feet wide. Big box, maybe. Made out of wood. Because wood is a really effective holder of energy. It's tree medicine. It's grounding. It's stabilizing. It's able to contain. You can't overwhelm it. The tree's been here a long time, yeah? So you can't can't you know the biggest fear of an empath is that we're going to overwhelm someone or ask for too much or take up too much space and so once you really start to trust that that's not possible and when you work with nature you can't overwhelm her you can't give her too much you can't ask for too much it's like nature and, and the universe are these endless sources of inspiration and support <clears throat> so i want you to gaze over at that box I want you to see that that box is open and that box is a portal. That box is whispering to you, give me what's too, too heavy for you, what you don't want to carry anymore. So spirit guides, guardians of the seven sacred gateways, we give thanks for this portal that you've opened through this beautiful box. And today we're going to put into that blessing box all of our troubles, all of our worries, all of our cares, all of our anxieties. We're going to pick them up and we're going to put them over there. And here's what you need to know about your blessing box. If you want to get those worries back, they're in there. I'm not, I'm not removing anything. I'm not banishing anything. I'm not sending anything to the four corners. I'm, I'm simply providing you today with a, a way station. I'm providing you with some rest. I'm taking this stuff off your shoulders today. It's too much for you. And how do you know it's too much? Energies that are too heavy for you to carry start showing up as physical body mass, weight gain, as illness and disease, as depression and panic attacks. And it's as simple as just saying, okay, over there you go. I can always go and visit you. I can, if I want to start worrying again, I can go and find you. <laughs> but for right now, in the box you go. So I want you to, I want you to focus your mind right now on the top three things. People, issues, challenges, shitty pickles as my students and I call them, that are really weighing on you. What's waking you up in the middle of the night? What's causing you to have that panic attack every day at 3 p.m.? What's, what's keeping you from getting excited about your life right now? And if you don't know, ask your spirit guides to show you. They're, you know, they don't intervene. They have this policy of non-intervention in human affairs until you ask for help. And by the way, a friend of mine, I love it so much, says that help stands for hello, eternal, loving presence. <laughs> That's sweet. So issue number one, darling, <clears throat> whatever that is, it could be something with your family, something at work, something from our past life, something, it could even be something that's just like crazy. I don't care what it is. Issue number one that is, that is awakening you, pushing you, weighing on you. Can you crystallize it for just a second? And now I want you to externalize that vision. I want you to imagine it as outside of you. Whatever that circumstance or problem or dilemma or challenge or energy frequency is, I want you to imagine it as external to you. I like to imagine them as little tiny boxes. Put it in a box. 
close the box. A little tiny box. Maybe it's like an inch big. All the energy of that person, that situation, that challenge, that fear, that anxiety, that worry. I'm going to put it all in that little one inch box right now. All your thoughts about it. All the conversations you're having about it. All goes in that little tiny box. And now I want you to take that little tiny box and put it in the bigger box. And I want you to physically feel, feel yourself put it down. And I want you to physically feel yourself raise your hand up, not holding it. You've released it. It's not gone. You're not repressing it because we don't want to do that. We're not here to repress anything. Repression leads to shadow emergence in dysfunctional ways. But I am telling you right now, it is not your birthright to carry around the world's problems. And so look over at that box now and see, see how that problem is sitting over there. <sighs> Seems kind of small, doesn't it? When you put distance between yourself and a challenge, you allow yourself critical perspective. You allow yourself a little bit of a buffer which allows you to look at that thing more objectively. Is it really as bad as you think it is? Is it really that impactful to you? Maybe so, it might be, there's no judgment here, but it allows you to step back and go, hmm. And especially if you maybe take a week break from it, like maybe you don't come back and visit it for seven days. So it's, it's you know, it's there, but you're taking a vacation from it. craziest thing you might experience is that maybe in seven days you're not thinking about it as much anymore and let me tell you something right now that's the real gift of this audio when you stop feeding that thing when you stop thinking about it when you stop looking it up on the internet when you stop dreaming about it it loses its battery And then you can really discern, is this mine or not mine? Because if you end up kind of forgetting about it, which could happen to you, then you realize, well, that wasn't even mine. I was carrying that around and that didn't even belong to me. And that will be a learning lesson to you to start doing this with everything in your life. And it's not, you know, you're not shirking responsibility by doing this. You're, this is a discernment exercise. Is it mine or is it somebody else's? If it's yours... You'll be like, no, you know what? I'm still aware of it. Like I, I have work to do there. And you can be honest with yourself at a certain point. But if it isn't yours, you're going to start to go, whoa, I went a whole three days without thinking about it because I put it in the box. <sighs> Issue number two. Words are so <laughs> full of connotation. Issue, challenge, problem, worry, anxiety, fear, bullshit, whatever, whatever word you like. Person, situation, energy stream, frequency. Let's put it in the box. You ready? Issue number two that's bothering you, keeping you awake. Freaking you out. Keeping you from laughing. Let's put it in the box. Goes in the box. Whew. And then number three. I know this requires trust. I know it does. You might be thinking, I can't, I can't sit this stuff down. Like, if I stop worrying about it, like. 
because we think we can control an outcome. You do know that you can't control much, right? So tell your ego, listen, ego, we haven't fixed this yet. So maybe we can try this. <laughs> like I said, it's still sitting there. You can go pick it up anytime you want. I'm creating critical distance between you and the things that you think are yours to solve, figure out, or transmute. There's your third thing in the box. You want a fourth thing? You want to put a fourth thing in the box? I feel like some of you, even though I'm recording this and you'll hear it later, I can feel the energy and I feel like some of you are like, wait, I have more stuff. I have more stuff. Everything goes in the box now. Anything else? Put it in. It's a big ass box. <laughs> you know, it's not afraid of you. Every empath thinks that their problems are too big. And I hate to tell you that, but that's partly your ego. You're very small. Your problems are very small. And the universe has got your back. And so great spirits, spirit guides, guardians of the seven sacred gateways, ascended masters, teachers, ancestors, and all beings of light who are here to attend, support, guide, and love us. We ask that as you take these things from us and hold them for us, that you also allow this to be a learning experience. Teach us the magic of disconnection. Show us through discernment what work is ours to do and what is actually ready to be released. We ask that if we're ready, ready to be released from these problems, challenges, circumstances, people, energies, frequencies, situations, that you release us in this moment. We ask that you release us from all low frequencies that may have been attached to us by others. We send those energies back to their source with the same intention with which they were sent. Everything back to its source. We place these energies in this box today as a means of creating sacred space between us and them so that we can see them more objectively as they are. Recognizing that when and if the time is right, we can return to them and work with them from a more elevated energetic perspective. And we give thanks for this distance today. Amenaho and so it is. And I want you to notice now, how do you feel? Do you feel more relaxed? Do you feel more present? How's your heart rate right now? How's your breathing feel? Are you comfortable in your body at this time? And spirit guides, when and if the time is right, please direct us back to the box to continue to work with these issues as we are required until that time, we will leave these challenges there. And recognize that as I say this to you, they will let you know if you need to go back and pick those things up again. Until that time, let it be. Let it be. You are not source. And if you're anything like me, you find a lot of comfort in knowing that there is a one source. And it is omnipotent and all-knowing. It holds past, present, and future in this moment. I believe it's a benevolent source. But knowing that I'm not it means I don't have to solve all of that at all. I can't solve it. 
it would be absolutely a waste of my time. So guess what? You can't either. Laying in bed, worrying about that stuff, getting up, worrying about that stuff, having panic attacks in service of that stuff is preventing you from experiencing the fullness of joy that is your birthright. And in some cases, it's, it is distracting you from the reason you're actually here. And it's a test. What will you do? Will you set your ego down and say, I can't change, fix, or solve, and I don't have to. That's not why I'm here. So I'm going to move through this life as gracefully as I can, looking at what's right in front of me right now, and putting the rest of it in a place where source can untangle the knots. And trust that that's accurate. Great Spirit, we give you permission today to move in our lives. We give you permission to untangle our knots, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic. We ask that you return all energies back to their source on our behalf today, with the same intention with which they were sent. And we ask that you help us return our own energies to ourselves, to reintegrate, to become whole again, to reclaim the joy of our childhood, the joy of infancy, the joy of purity, the joy of innocence, the joy of mystery and infinite wisdom, possibility, optimism. It's hard to be optimistic when you're carrying a bunch of shit around, right? If you were to ask me how to do that, I wouldn't even know what to tell you. I don't know how to be optimistic when I'm just sitting there staring at all of my problems. Like, I don't know how to do that. But I do know I don't have to sit there and stare at all my problems all day every day because I'm not the one who's going to solve them at the end of the day. I don't have that skill set. But thank goodness I don't have to have it and neither do you. I'm taking the pressure off of you today. Roll those shoulders back. Feel the lightness of being when you set your worries down. Lay those worries down. Put the buckets on the floor. Get it off your shoulders. And Great Spirit, we ask that you attract to us energies of peace, alignment, joy, optimism, excitement about this life. And help us to radiate that, that light out into the world so that others see it as a living example of what's possible. And we give thanks today. Some people like to actually have a physical box they don't put anything in it, nothing physical. Although I guess you could. You could put shungite in there to, to filter out. You could put black tourmaline, which transmutes. There's different things you could do. <clears throat> but it can just be an image in your mind, too. And so spirit guides, great spirit, ascended masters, teachers, light beings, <clears throat> we thank you for attending us today. We release the guardians of the seven sacred directions. We release our worries, hesitations, cares, and concerns, and we move forward with wings of a butterfly ready to emerge from that chrysalis and become the fullest expression of who we are in this lifetime. It's my wish for you. May it be so. Amen, aho. And so it is. Never feel guilty about laying your worries down. You're not meant to carry them. With so much love, may you find peace.